Hey guys, I just was working on some Zen tangles and uh, getting my still life ready for some pastel. I'm really excited to get started. So I'm going to show you a few things and uh, bear with me because my microphone didn't work as I was recording. So I'm narrating with this. So there might be a couple pauses, but um, I am actually going to fill in all my Zen tangles and that's what you're to do before you start pasteling. But I'm going to show you this demo now uh, because I know a lot of you are ready and have those untangles done. So this is a box of pastels that uh, will look very similar to what you're using. Um, notice here there's a couple pastels that are broken. That's okay. Um, but a lot of times that happens because the box is dropped or because the pastel itself is dropped. So we just need to take care as we are putting things away that we do so nicely and treat these chalk pastels with a little bit more genteelness uh, so they don't break. Um, the boxes that you're going to be getting might also look like this. Um, these are much more well-loved and used chalk pastels. They still work the same. Um, and I like to keep them with the same colors. So please try to put the colors back as they should be. Um, and notice like this purple matches here. So I'm going to switch this out, put these together so that light colors are together. And that just makes it a little easier for you. As we get started, I'm going to go back to my original set um, and want to pick some colors that are going to work well with our still life. And I'm going to start with the orange. So I want to pick colors that are pretty close to each other on the color wheel. And I'm going to pick a medium color, a dark shadow color, and a light highlight color. And um, so we can get a good range of colors with our pastels. Really nice because they blend very similarly to oil pastel and even the paint. They are just a dry form of paint. So we can layer them together. A couple things that we'll need to have handy are a Kleenex or paper towel. And I would appreciate you trying to use the paper towels for this as the Kleenexes are running a little low. When we want those to stick around for when we actually have colds and we got runny noses and things. So try to pick a paper towel, um, from the paper towel holders on the wall, and that'll help with um, cleanup of the pastels and give you a place to set your pastels as you're working. <clears throat> so when you're working on these, we're gonna pick um, some colors and we can use our little cheat color wheel here. There's one on the cabinet that you can peek at, um, but there are um, the primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. And then you can see the secondary colors, green, orange, and purple or violet. And then we also have the intermediate colors, which are between the primary and the secondary colors. So red and the purple mix to make red, violet. There's red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, and even blue violet. So we can use any array of these colors to work with on our orange or our pear or our flower pot. So um, when I'm picking colors, I want to pick colors that are pretty near to each other on the color wheel so that they blend well together. If I go opposite, then I'm going to get more browns and muddied colors. Um, so we can just pick darker versions of color. So I'm going to go with an orange and I'm gonna use kind of a red tone or even a red violet for my shadows and also a yellow for my highlight. And I'm even going to pull a white because I can make a tint of orange by adding white to it. And that's a light tint of a color. So I'm gonna pull those colors out. And so I don't get pastel all over my paper. I'm gonna set them on a piece of paper towel um, so they don't smudge all over. So I've got an orange. I'm gonna go with a deeper, Kind of a red orange to add my shadows and like I said a yellow and a white to add those lighter highlights and shades to my my drawing so as we get started we are going to take that orange and we're gonna lay a light color across our orange. Now many of the pastels you're going to get are going to be rounded, they're going to be used, but if you get a newer set sometimes it has kind of a point or an angle to the edge. So it's good to use that um, to get in some of the details. 
If you're coloring in a larger area, you're gonna wanna use more of the side of the pastel. So I'm filling in this area here. And as you will see, it's kind of hard to see, but there's some little um, chalk dust. And we wanna get rid of that. We don't want that to get brushed all over our paper because it's gonna create uh, a big mess on areas that we want to keep white. We're gonna take another piece of paper towel and we're just gonna tap that onto that paper towel. And you see that that dust comes right off. Nice cool little pile of it there. We're gonna keep that to the side because we're gonna keep doing this a lot during this uh, drawing. So now I'm ready to add my shadow. The light is coming from the left side and so the shadow is going to be on the right side of my orange. There's my light and coming in, hitting the side of the orange there. And we're gonna add in a deeper shadow um, on that right side. So we're gonna pick up our red orange and we're going to add another layer of color to create that shadow. We want to make sure that we are going in the curve of the orange. We don't want this to be a straight flat line. We want it to curve with the contours of our shape. So if we're doing an apple or a pear or banana, we're gonna curve it with the contours of that shape. And as we build these shadows, we're also gonna wanna go back to our original color and overlap those edges so it blends together. We don't wanna start line there. We wanna have a soft blend. A lot of dust again, anytime we add more color, tap that off onto our paper towel, set our paper back down. <clears throat> At this point, um, we just want to be careful as we're working that we don't smudge the pastels across the paper. Sometimes when you tap it, it will um, catch on the paper a little bit, um, but if we brush it, it's going to push it into the paper fibers and it's going to be more likely to stain. Um, the great thing about pastel is it does erase to some extent, but if it's pushed heavily into the paper, it's not gonna come out, it's going to stain the paper. Now we're ready to add our highlights. You'll notice, especially on lighter colors, a lot of that will get will pick up the other pastel colors, so this has a little blue on it. So I'm just going to wipe that off on a piece of paper towel to clean that. All the old blue's gone, and we're ready to lay some highlights into our orange. So we're going to go on that left side where the light is hitting the orange and pick up that highlight and really pull that light into the contour of the orange. So it's in a curved line along that left edge, blending the far edge of that highlight again with the light orange. Tapping the extra powder or chalk dust off of our paper before we go to this next step. What we're gonna do now is we're going to take our fingers and we're going to blend these colors together. And as we do this, we are going to go in the contour of the orange. So we're gonna keep that curve. Okay, we don't wanna go straight across. We want to go in a curve so that it keeps that spherical shape showing in our pastel drawing. So pulling that dark, around the curve, the, the back side of the orange, doing the same with the front side and the highlight. So I'm noticing that that shadow kind of blended out quite a bit. So I'm gonna go back in with that shadow color again, and I'm gonna layer a little bit more color to really deepen the shadow. Blending that in again, and then tapping that powder off eventually. And I'm still thinking Looking at that, I could go a little bit darker, but I don't think I'm gonna get as dark as I want with red. So I'm gonna go a little bit further on the color wheel. I'm gonna edge over to that red violet, and I'm gonna pull a violet out of my pastel box and use that to really deepen that shadow. So as long as it's near our original shadow color, um, we can get a good blend. So I'm gonna pull out a violet here and just edge in that shadow right where it gets overlapped by the flower pot. So just a touch. And again, I'm gonna blend that with my finger. I wanna use a clean finger, so I might have to use a different one. Come on my pinky now. So now I have a nice good shadow for my orange. It really makes it look very spherical now. <clears throat> 
So now we're going to move on to our pair and create uh, similar shadows with a pair, but we need to pick another set of colors because we don't want our, all of our fruits to be the same color. So the pairs that I have as examples are kind of in that yellow, kind of light yellow green family. So I'm going to keep my yellow and I'm going to keep my white for the highlights, but I'm going to put these warm colors away. And I'm going to pick out a lighter green. For thy medium tone, or for most of the tone, the yellow is going to act as the highlight, and then a darker green for the shadows. So we're going to lay in our light color first, so we can build up our shadows. Again, you can use the corner. If you have a bigger area, you can use the side. We're just going to fill in that whole area of the pear with that light color. Being careful not to squeak into the orange too much. <clears throat> We're going to tap our dust off on our paper. You'll notice as you get working on this that you are going to create a lot of dust on your paper, around your paper, that paper towel. If you're not careful and you just pick that up, that dust is going to fly everywhere. Um, so we want to make sure that we clean that up at the end of each class period. So there are sponges at the sink for you to do that. And um, it helps to, one, wet the sponge down, and two, squeeze the extra water out. We don't want to create a puddle on our desk. We want the sponge to be damp, not sopping wet. So be sure to use those at the cleanup mark at the end of class. And I'll give you three or four extra minutes to do that. So now I'm adding in a lime green all over. I'm just leaving a little, little hint of highlight yellow on the left side there where that light's hitting. I've got a lot of dust on this again. So I'm going to tap that off. You can see like the mountains of dust. Tap that off, move that out of the way here, and then we are ready to I'm do some blending and add in our deep shadow. So here comes this dark green, and we're gonna build that on the bottom of the pear and also where the edge of the orange is overlapping and creating a shadow on that. Pair. So that shadow is probably gonna be a little bit deeper and a little bit whiter than if it were just sitting there by itself because that orange is blocking a little bit more of the light than it would on its own. So we're building that up and keeping with the contours of the pear. I've gone up a little bit higher because we want that to be a little bit more green on that side. So I'm blending this lime green back in on that highlight side and leaving a little hint of yellow just to pull that highlight and then really pulling out with a hint of white to lighten up that that area there and again we've got to tap off all that chalk dust get that out of our way so we can really see what's happening so now we're ready to blend that shadow and really focus on contours now i'm getting really dirty here so i want to make sure i pick a finger that's fairly clean i don't want to pull any orange into my green because i'm going to get a muddy brown color with that so Keeping my blending with the curve of the pear, I'm noticing I need to add a little bit more shadow there. So I'm gonna pull more of that green in and darken that shadow up even more. Every time you layer, you're building the colors up on your paper. You can always take them back a little bit, but you can't completely get rid of them. So it's good to start light and then build your way darker gradually rather than go dark right away because it's really hard to take all of that darkness out. That added a nice shadow there, so that really pops that pear out a little bit. And I'm noticing I've got some chalk on my fingers and it's getting on the edges, so it's also a good idea at your tables to keep a sponge, a damp sponge, and I usually put them just sitting on the table, or sometimes I'll put it in a basket and I'll wipe my fingers on it. Um, to keep them clean in between colors and as I'm picking my paper up and down to, to shake things off of it. Sometimes you'll get a little um, over color on another object. So in this case, I just put a little more white on there. I'm 
which you might have to erase that extra color that you didn't want. And uh, now we're ready to add some color to this flower pot and really pop this flower pot because it's really flat now next to the orange and the pear, which look really rounded and more three dimensional. So I want this to be a little warmer, so I'm gonna kind of keep it in tune with a flower pot color, which would be kind of a terracotta or orangish brown color. I'm gonna lay that orangish brown or terracotta color on the whole outside edge of the pot. I'm trying to use the whole side of my chalk pastel, but it's got a dip in it, so it's not working. So I'm gonna use the corner. We're gonna fill this all in with that terracotta color. It's really pretty. So it's got a really nice warm tone to it, but you might have a lot of warm tone fruits or vegetables in your still life. So you might wanna use something that is a cool color. So maybe you wanna make your pot blue. Maybe you wanna make it purple. So if that's the case, then you're just gonna use different, um, those different colors and you're gonna pick a medium, a light and a dark of that color set and use the same techniques and create um, that colorful pot instead of a neutral pot like I have here. So that's up to you and that's part of your artistic license is making that choice and deciding what's going to work best with your color scheme that you've already already used on some of your fruits. So I'm going to blend this first layer to even it out a little bit. And I'm just using my finger and kind of smoothing that out so I can't see much of the paper anymore. And then we're just gonna continue to build some layers. So I want to make this look more three-dimensional. And this area I'm working on now is gonna be lighter. So that's where the light's gonna hit it. So we're gonna go back in with that, with a lighter shade in a little while. Now we're gonna add some shading or shadows into the bottom of the pot because the light's coming from this direction here. And so the shadow is going to be on this bottom edge. So I'm gonna pick a darker brown and build the shadow in to really make this flower pot look like a sphere. It's already looking better. I'm really contouring it around. So I only went about halfway up, not even halfway, and I'm gonna pull that color up with my finger and that curved motion, just like the rest of my lines in my flower pot. Okay. I still need to go darker. It's not quite rounding all the way around. So I'm gonna get rid of this extra dust. And I could go a couple different ways. I could pick um, kind of a blue or a purple to really deepen that. But you could also pick a black. And in this case, I'm going to try this brown, but it's too light. It's actually lighter than the brown I've already used. So I'm just going to blend that in. I'm pulling out a black. What I would caution you on with black whenever you're using it for shadows, make sure that it really is the best color choice. In this case, brown. Um, with brown, it's going to work pretty well. It's going to really deepen the color. But if you're doing it with yellow, probably not a good choice. You'd probably want to use an orange or maybe even a tan brown color, dark and not yellow. Um, red would be the same because black is very, very dominant. So it's going to take over that picture really quickly if you're not careful. So it seems to be blending pretty well here, and it's really making that look round now, isn't it? So I'm going to pull some more of that brown in to blend that together. Going about two thirds of the way up, blending that and curving that blend. And I'm going to go back in with that red brown terracotta on that very top edge. And I'm going to keep blending it just to pull that shadow together and really make it um, soften that edge there and get rid of some of that white. So I'm really pulling that color in. And then we're going to do the same thing on the edge of our pot and on the inside. So we got that really deep shadow and that really rounds that form out. So it makes that look really 3D. And we're gonna do the same thing on this flower pot edge. Build in that darker brown. And pull in some of our black. Just a tad, you don't need very much. And then we're gonna pull that up into the rest of the pot. Pull 
on that terracotta back end for that highlight side, the lighter side. I think we're going to need to tap that off of there. We've got a lot of buildup. We're going to add in that a light shade of that terracotta brown on the inside because remember that's where the light's hitting. It's actually not deep, deep shadow except for right there behind the orange and really underneath the orange and behind the pear. <clears throat> so I'm going to blend this in. I'm actually going to add in some white to soften that just a tad to tint it a little bit lighter than what we see on the outside of the pot. I'm losing, I'm losing clean finger, finger, so I'm down to my ring finger now. Remember, you can keep a sponge next to you and wipe your fingers off. I just don't have one. <clears throat> Okay, so we've got that light area inside. We've got the shadow on the bottom of the pot. I think we're ready to tackle this banana. I've picked a creamy yellow. I didn't want to go too bright because that would look a little, um, um, you know, non-organic. It would be neon yellow bananas. I don't think will look very healthy. So I'm also going to pull a tan color. It's kind of a almost like a yellow orange, but just with a little bit of black in it so it kind of dulls it out. I'm going to build that in for the shadow. Looking a little dark, so what I might do after I get this first layer on is go back in with my banana color, my cream color, and, and blend that in a little bit better so it's not quite as dark. And now, of course, it's looking too light, so I'm going to tap some of that extra dust off. The yellow was pretty crumbly. I'm going to <clears throat> blend this in and kind of fill in that white but I'm looking at it and I'm thinking yes I need to add a little bit more shadow to it so I'm gonna go back in with that deeper kind of brownish color and build that shadow back in that's looking a lot better kind of getting the tip of that it's a pretty fresh ripe banana so it's, it doesn't have all the brown specks on it yet so we're gonna keep it kind of as it is keep that bright yellow color to contrast the brown of the pot. And I'm gonna actually add in a little bit of a highlight. The banana skin's not super shiny, but it does have a little bit of a shine to it. So I'm just gonna add this little white area in here. A little highlight and blend that in a little bit. Who's taping this? Because we can't even see what you're doing. This is AC. Oh, thank you. All right, so we've got the highlight. Now the last step is to add a color to the blanket or the fabric that we have underneath it. And so I have used a lot of warm colors minus my pear, which is a cool color. So you can see the warm colors are the yellows, the oranges, and the reds. Cool colors are the greens, the blues, and the violets. Violet can kind of go both ways, especially if it's red violet. I'm gonna go with a cool color and I'm gonna add a little bit more cool to my warm color scheme here. I'm gonna pick a light blue. I'm going to go with the lightest blue. It's kind of a baby blue. I'm going to fill this whole area in. And then we'll go back in. We'll blend it. And then we'll see if we need a darker blue to add on to it. Or if we can just get away with a darker blue for the shadows. So like I said, I'm using the side of my pastel. And then we're going to have to tap all that. See all that dust? Oh my goodness. Tap all that dust onto our paper towel. Do not blow it. Don't tap it onto the table, but tap it onto a paper towel so you can just crumble that up at the end of class and throw it away. We're gonna blend that in with a clean finger. Don't forget you can wash your hands in the sink if you need to, or wipe it on a damp sponge if you have one at your table as you're working. Blending in, that light blue looks really nice. I think I'm gonna keep that light blue and we'll go ahead and pick a little bit darker shade to add in some of these shadows. So we'll pull out a shadow underneath the banana and also underneath the pear and that little corner underneath the flower pot. It's a tiny little chalk pastel blue, but it works just the same. There's a nice little point on it so you can get in those little areas. And we're going to blend that in with the rest of the fabric color. And you might decide you want to go a little bit darker, so just pick a little darker blue, kind of build that in. 
can always go back in and, and blend out the edges. We're gonna need to tap our dust off. Fill in some of our white areas that showed up after we got rid of that dust. And there you have it, a finished pastel still life. I hope you guys enjoy working with pastel. And um, remember, one of those key steps, make sure you have a paper towel handy to, to tap your dust off. And make sure you have a sponge handy at the end to wipe your table down. We do not want to uh, create a mess for the next class and get that all over their, their Chromebooks, their assignment books, or their artwork. The very last step for this will be to spray this with what's called a spray fixative. And that fixes the top of the stove so it doesn't smudge around as much. So at the end, when you're finished with your entire top pastel still life, you've got all your zentangles done, erase out any extra color, and you're gonna bring that to me with your name on it. And I am gonna take that outside and I'm gonna spray it. It kinda looks like a hairspray and it will fix that top pastel to your paper so it doesn't smudge all over um, everything and ruin your beautiful artwork. I hope you have fun. I'm looking forward to seeing these finished designs.